This video is a five-step guide to overcoming binge eating once and for all. It's based on the most clinically researched process currently in existence, as well as my own personal experience with overcoming it. Up until very recently, I had been a binge eater my whole life. I would make it through 80% of my day doing well on my diet, and then I would get home and crush 3,000 calories in like 15 minutes and ruin everything in a very short period of time. This went on for years. It really wasn't until like the last few years that I was able to actually start getting it under control and like really reeling it in. I know that if I had have had some of these tips back in the day, it may have saved me like a few years of trial and error and trying to figure this stuff out. So I'm hoping that this video can do that for some of you today. So I hope this helps and let's get into the video. So if we're gonna talk about binge eating, we should define it first. Binge eating has two core characteristics. Eating a large quantity of food in one sitting and feeling out of control or helpless to stop the behavior. Feelings of guilt, shame, and remorse are all hallmarks of binge eating disorder along with secretive behavior. The foods eaten during a binge are typically forbidden foods, foods that the person has like told themselves they're not allowed to have. But if you're anything like me, they can also just be anything that was like within the general area during your binge. <laughs> Anything remotely edible. Of the millions of people struggling with binge eating, two thirds are overweight or obese, and many of those people are on a diet. This video is mainly directed at you if you fit this category, but I do think that some of these tips will be helpful if you don't. I just don't have any experience, so I can't say for sure. Causes. So obviously no one knows exactly what causes binge eating disorder because everyone's situation is a little bit different, but we do know that that binge eating happens in a cycle. You binge, you feel terrible about yourself. You say, okay, this is the last time, I'm never gonna do it again, and then inevitably you crack and you binge again, and it just keeps going and going and going. We know that a major contributing factor to this cycle is strict dieting, or at least attempted strict dieting. Strict dieting is a little bit different than just like being on a diet. It's considered any form of dieting that follows any strict rules you must follow, eliminates entire food groups or types of foods, or constricts calories to very, very low levels. There are a few different problems with approaching weight loss this way. First, it is way harder than necessary. Second, it is too easy to feel that you've blown your whole diet for the day when the bar is set so high that there is no margin for error. For example, if you're restricting your calories to something like 1200 per day, that's really not a lot of food for most people, especially, I mean, unless you're short and you live a very sedentary lifestyle. So you're gonna get hungry, that's expected. And you will at some point eat more than your caloric goal if it's ridiculously low. It's going to happen. So it's inevitable that you break your own rules a little bit. But with binge eating comes that whole crazy mindset where you're like, well, I ate a cookie today, so may as well just, you know, order four pizzas and six eat six pints of haagen -Dazs. And tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow I'm gonna be so good. I've said that to myself so, so many times throughout my binge eating journey. <laughs> then tomorrow comes, you're bloated, you're like retaining water, and the scale shows that you've gained like five, pounds and you feel so bad about yourself that you promise that okay you know tomorrow or today or whatever is the day you're gonna do so well um, you're gonna be extra strict to make up for all the calories that you ate during your binge I know for me I would constantly constantly have days where I was trying to eat nothing at all and I would eat nothing until I got home from school or work where I would crush so much food in the first like half hour of being home that I was rapidly gaining weight despite spending most of the day eating literally nothing at all. I was almost 260 pounds by the first year of university, not eating anything between the hours of like 8 and 5 p.m. But I couldn't break the cycle because the binging made me feel so friggin' bad about myself. I felt that the only solution was to buckle down and not eat anything the next day. I hated myself so, so much that I felt doing anything other than like not eating anything was not enough. It wasn't enough of an effort to make up for what I had done. And for all those years, I thought that I was dieting so in such a strict, intense way because of my binge eating. But it turns out, and I can only understand this now, 
but it turns out that it was the other way around. My binge eating was the result of my strict dieting. And it's this like all or nothing, I need to be perfect, or it's like not good enough kind of thinking that can just take us and lock us into a cycle like that for a very, very long time. And because you're involved so emotionally that it can, it can literally keep you there for years and years. So five steps to overcoming binge eating. One, get rid of strict rules and perfectionism. This is the most important tip and also the most difficult one to put into practice. But you need to know that the desire to have these really strict rules about what you can and can't eat, along with overly negative kind of thoughts about yourself are as much a part of binge eating as the actual eating is. So if you want to stop binge eating once and for all, you have to deal with what comes before it, no matter how difficult it may be. The more strongly you feel that you need rules like this and that you feel your case is a little bit different kind of thing, the more you will benefit from getting rid of them entirely. Just get them out of your life. Strict diet rules about what and how much you can eat and all that kind of stuff, they just set you up to fail from the get-go. If you set your goal here and you hit here, that's a successful day. In all likelihood, if you have eaten something that's like off plan, you definitely haven't gained any weight and you probably haven't even blown your diet for the day. So when the negative, I've already blown it for the day type thoughts start to kind of creep in, just stop and recognize them as part of the binge eating disorder. The more you start to see like failure or mistakes or just eating things off plan as an inevitable part of the process, the easier it is going to be for you to stop yourself from having a full on binge. Two, establish a flexible eating schedule for the day. When you kind of already know what you're eating plan is for the day, it takes a little bit of your mental energy away from food. Establish a schedule that works for you, works for your life, and includes three meals, and I would recommend also a couple of snacks. It's really not a great time to experiment with things like intermittent fasting when you are trying to overcome binge eating. The most important thing is to create a plan that is individual to you, it works for you, it's made up of foods that you like, and it has enough food in it. And a very important tip is to not skip any of your planned meals or snacks, especially not in an effort to like cut more calories or anything like that, which brings us to our third point. Make sure you're eating enough. If you're trying to overcome binge eating, but also trying to diet at the same time, you do need to make sure that you're eating enough food. You don't really have the option if you want to succeed at overcoming binge eating to eat at a really crazy caloric deficit. When you're under eating by a large margin, your body creates intense physiological and psychological pressures in order to get you to eat. You'll feel hungrier, irritable, you'll pick up on more food in your environment, and you may even be consumed with thoughts about eating. Eating is a high level goal for your body. It is an ancient, like primal goal, and your body really prioritizes it super heavily over your weight loss goals. So if your body thinks that you're starving, you're putting yourself into a situation where when you are confronted with food, which you will be, you are much, much more likely to like lose control and binge. And again, this is important. The more that you feel that you need to eat a really low amount of calories, even if you think it's for like a super, super rational reason, the more you will benefit from just totally getting rid of this mentality. Four, create a binge log and look for trends. Everybody has different binge triggers. It could be a place, a time of day, group of people that you're hanging out with, um, a mood, boredom, a whole bunch of different things. For instance, you might notice that eating something sweet, even if it's healthy, just sets you off and then you go crazy from there. Or if you've had a really stressful day at work, you may notice that those are the days that you are much more likely to binge. Being able to recognize the different things that trigger you is such a simple concept, but it's super, super key. Everybody's a little bit different and the more you know about yourself and what makes you want to binge, the easier it's going to be for you to combat it. Write down the date, the time, like what you were doing, anything that was kind of going through your head. Sometimes it's a certain thought or even a picture that kind of flashes in your mind before you begin to binge. All this information can be really helpful to help you figure out what exactly you say to yourself and what goes on prior to a binge. Also track the times that you 
wanted to binge but you didn't and track how you felt both when you didn't binge and when you did tracking this kind of stuff is a great way to motivate yourself to change and a great way to show your progress over time even small things like cutting a binge early or you know deciding not to go to the store to get more things for your binge are all progress and seeing those kind of things can kind of motivate you to keep working on it even when times seem a little rough five make a plan as you start to kind of figure out you know what's causing the binges you can make a plan to not let it happen again now it's obviously not just going to be like amazing out of the gate and perfectly successful the first time you try it maybe it will but probably it won't expect it normal say it's boredom that's causing you to eat have multiple plans for really fun and exciting things that you can do instead of eating and they have to be exciting because eating is pretty it's a good time especially if you're a binge eater so you have to have plans that are like equally good. If you know when and what or like the preceding incidents that cause you to binge, then you can start to formulate a plan to get around whatever it is that's making this happen. Bonus tip number six, don't give yourself such a hard time. Binge eating causes a lot of feelings of guilt, shame, loneliness, like you can't talk to other people about it. And like, you're the only one who deals with it. That is all part of it. You're going to mess up and make mistakes during this process. You should expect to fail. It's nothing more than useful feedback to help you in the future. Also, don't get really down on your body as hard as it may be. It's just like strict dieting and that it makes it really, really hard to look logically at your situation. It sounds cliche, but it is totally, it's true. The kinder you are to yourself and the more that you behave out of a place of like self-love as opposed to hate, the easier it is to make a transformation. That is it for the video. I hope it has been helpful. I will link the book below that most of these tips came from. I really do think that it would help anyone who struggles with binge eating. I mean, it's a little bit of a dry read, I will say, <laughs> but there is a lot of like first person accounts of people who kind of like their little diaries and stuff. And I do think it would be helpful for anybody who is dealing with it to read it and try out some of the tips. Again, thank you so much for watching and I really, really hope that this has been helpful for you.